Bonjour, willkommen and howdy. What are we doing today? Okay, we're going to go and help a friend of mine who's got a very old, non-running Series 1 Land Rover. It's an 80 inch, going to bring it up to the unit and try and get the thing running. So come with us on the journey, watch us rescue the Series 1 and hopefully we'll get it going by the end of the day. starting to work on the series one. First thing to do is to make sure we've got a good battery, which we have, and then to check we've got a good supply of fuel. Uh, we had a look at the glass strainer, it seems pretty murky, so we decided to have a look 
inside of a fuel tank. And I think I should share this with you. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen uh, petrol this colour. So here we go. There we go. It looks like brown winds of soup. So I think the best thing we can do is to get that out as soon as possible. So to start it, we've actually got a choke, so we're pulling the choke out. We're making sure that the gear stick is in neutral so it doesn't jump anywhere. We're going over here and we are turning on the ignition. You see that we've got an ignition light there as well. And here, just below, is the starter. So pressing this in should start the engine. Oh, and there it goes. We're going to put the choke back in. Sounding quite rich there and fast. The choke goes back in slowly. It's quite cold today, so I might not put the choke fully in. I'm going to slowly ease it back in. Okay, engine's sounding really good actually on this. Yep, there we go, engine's running. Okay, so here we are. We've now got the engine running. So it's a matter of just uh, turning it on, a bit of choking, off it went. We're actually feeding the engine directly <coughs> from a reservoir there of fresh fuel, not straight into the carburetor. For those of you that are into uh, Series 1 Lamb Rovers, you will notice that this is not the original engine. This is a probably two and quarter petrol from a Series 2A, actually a particular vehicle. Looking down here, I'm looking at the fuel pump here, the mechanical one, and you can just about see there the dirt bouncing around at the bottom of that uh, fuel strainer. We'll clean that out in a moment. All we're actually doing is we're just pumping the old fuel out. Okay, and what we have here now is the exhaust. See it? It's a cold day today, so what we've got here is smoke coming out. Now what I'm going to do is get some on my hand. We go probably on the camera lens now. I'm going to see it, and I just did a little bit of a taste test on there, just to see. The centre might be slightly sweet. Okay, so sweet will mean that we've got antifreeze coming through, but it's not that bad. Um, smelling it, it smells of burnt fuel, not unburnt. So yeah, I think we're okay. We'll go back and have a look. At Hiya. Okay, so we've pumped out most of the dirty fuel out of the fuel tank. We don't want to suck the sediment at the bottom of the tank into our fuel bowl because we just have to clean that out as well. So what we're going to do now is siphon out the last of the fuel at the bottom of the petrol tank. Now to do that, we're going to use good old fashioned method. And it's just a, a see-through pipe we're going to put into the bottom of the tank. I'm taping it to this breaker bar so we can make sure that this end gets firmly down in the bottom corner of the fuel tank. I'll suck on the other end, hopefully you won't get a mouthful of it, and we will siphon the rest of the fuel out. Okay, so what did I say a second ago? If I did it wrong, I'd end up with a mouthful of petrol. Well, I did, and I can tell you that petrol's off, because it just didn't taste right. Ah! And here we have the fuel bowl. Yep, green deposit, so that's quite novel. We'll get that cleaned out and put back on. So here we are. The fuel sediment bowl is now nice and clean. Also cleaned up the tightening mechanism because this wasn't working earlier. So that does up nice and easily and it undoes as well. So we'll put that back in on the fuel pump. We'll get the new line on. We'll replace this rather grotty fuel line here. It's just falling apart, but nice new uh, unleaded resistant fuel lines on and we should be good to get this running. just put the soft top on and the tops of the doors and the vehicle looks completely transformed.
So what we're going to do tomorrow is we will compare this against a Willis Jeep to look at the difference in sizes, basic performance and ride and comfort.